you cover a long period of time. Why did you want to cover the whole story, really, rather than just pick a specific time in Mandela's life? Well, this is Mandela's words. You know, this is this is inspired, and and Mandela's long walk to freedom does track the whole of his life. And to understand the man, and to uh, we couldn't cherry pick a certain period. I mean, a certain period of the history could make another film, but this is Mandela's own autobiography. So this is his story. His and it felt important to us to understand where Mandela came from, his cultural heritage, his tribal heritage, and what he did and what he achieved, and, and how he was as a young man. I mean, I, I, hadn't, I didn't know before I set about this production. I went to South Africa and lived there for a year, talked to men and women that knew him as a young man. Knew, I knew he was a lawyer, but I didn't know that he boxed and he fought and he loved cars and loved tailoring and suits and, and, and clothes. And, and women and, and was a young man and had dreams and hopes like every other young man. So it felt important that we, if we were to tell Mandela's story, to tell the whole story because to understand him deeply. I mean, I spent time with the family and spent time with his daughters and we know what Mandela achieved. We understand what he achieved, but the cost to him, the cost to him as a man, to see him as a young man flaw, with his flaws as well as, and his failings as well as his successes, but actually the cost of what he went through as a, as a father, as a husband, you know, what they did to him was horrific. You know, they, they took away his freedom. He was prepared to die for his beliefs. And yet here's a man that has such forgiveness in his heart and, and understands his enemy and understands a way forward. I think he must be the only political leader in history to be able to guide a country through a relatively, in a relatively peaceful way and make a transition for democracy with peaceful means. I mean, I don't think there's another example of that. And the fact that he came from such a, a beginning and, and was was a, a young man that had hopes and a family and a young family who he loved dearly. The cost of that felt as though that, that felt the heart of the story for, for me and, and for, the, for the creative team. We wanted to make a film that explored Mandela as a human being. You know, he wants himself not to be remembered as the saint, but as the man. And that makes his journey even more extraordinary, I, I feel. How much involvement did Mandela and his family have well, they were all involved. I mean, I, I met men and women and spent time with their families on both sides of the struggle, the jailers, the interrogators, not just the people of, of the struggle, but men, on bo men and women on both sides. I spent time with, their, with the Mandela family. I spent time with Winnie. She still lives in Soweto today. I spent t time with the daughters, with the jailers. I was taken to Robin Island by some of the comrades that were on the same wing as Mandela. It was all to, all to try and scratch underneath the surface of the history book and get in amongst it and feel the, 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 the real complexity of these characters and the characters that were portraying. The one responsibility for me, you know, coming from Manchester in England and going into a country was to listen and observe and to, to be true to the people that I was representing. And we took the film back last three weeks ago to, to, to Soweto and Johannesburg and showed it to the comrades, showed it to the family, showed it to Winnie and the daughters and the lawyers that represented Mandela. And they all, all of them, talked and responded emotionally and felt it was true to their struggle and true to their lives. And that, for us as filmmakers, meant everything.